Good evening. Welcome to the August 10th, 2021 combined work session and regular virtual meeting. The first item on our work session agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As permitted by the board section 520.1 resolution, and due to the circumstances giving rise to that resolution, the board is holding this advertised public meeting virtually. The procedures for this virtual meeting are more fully described in the Upper Darby School School Board COVID-19 special operating procedures and include those for public participation. Dr. McGarry, will you please outline the public participation procedures, please, sir? Yes, Board President Brown. This evening we'll uh, continue our engagement with the public as we have during the pandemic by asking members of the public to either phone in their information at 610-789-7200, extension 2000. Please provide your name, address, and the specific report you'd like to comment on this, this evening. You can also send your comments in via email at board meeting, board meeting comments at upperdarbysd.org. Again, board meeting comments at upperdarbysd.org. Please provide your name, address, and the specific report you'd like to comment on. The board will take those comments into consideration before taking any action. We've also received comments prior to 7.30, and we will read those comments during the general comments section during tonight's public meeting. Thank you, Board President Brown. Thank you, Dr. McGarry, and please feel free to revisit that throughout the night at your discretion, sir. Okay. The, reg the regular virtual meeting of the Upper Darby School District Board of School Directors will please come to order. There was a closed session this evening from 5.30 p.m. until 6.47 p.m. for matters to be discussed within the limitations for closed deliberations as prescribed by Pennsylvania Act 93 of 1998. For this evening's meeting, there were personnel and litigation matters. Roll call, Board Secretary, Mr. Rogers, please. Dr. Haig? I am present and can hear the proceedings. Mr. Desnoyers? Present. Mr. Warsavage? Present. Mr. Neal? Present. Mrs. Williams? Present. Mr. Fields? I am present and can hear the proceedings. Mrs. Mitchell? I am present and I can hear the proceedings. Mrs. Curry? Mr. Brown? I am present and I can hear the proceedings. Thank you, sir. In order to allow this to continue virtually, and as permitted by policy 003, I move to suspend portions of the following policies. From policy 006, I move to suspend language in the section titled, Public Participation to Remove the Words Present at a Board Meeting, and thereby allow members of the public to participate through the other means we have provided. In policy 006.1, I move to suspend the language, a majority of board members shall be physically present at a board meeting when a board member attends through electronic communications. This will allow as many board members as necessary to participate remotely. Do I have a second? David second. Neal, second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All those opposed, please say I oppose and state your name for the record. Anyone abstaining, please say I abstain and state your name for the record. The motion carries. Okay, the minutes of the combined work session slash regular meeting of July 13, 2021 is in the hands of each board member and has been made available to the public. I move for it to Dr. Hoppe. This is Mrs. Mitchell, second. Thank you. Are there any comments from the board? Hearing none, Ms. Buford, are there any comments from the public? There are no comments from the public. Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying I oppose and state your name for the record. Those abstaining, please say, please signify by saying I abstain and state your name for the record. The motion carried. The report of the secretary, please, Mrs. Williams. 
The report of the secretary is in the hands of each board member and has been made available to the public. I move for its adoption. Thank you. Are there any comments from the board? Hearing none, Ms. Buford, are there any comments from the public? There are no comments from the public. Thank you. All those in favor, aye. please signify by saying aye. 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 Mrs. David, aye. Aye. second the motion. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Neal. Property second, properly seconded. And I'll ask, there's no comments from the board. Ms. Buford said there were no comments from the public. And I think everyone voted and said aye. Those opposed, please signify by saying I oppose and state your name for the record. Those abstaining, please signify by saying I abstain and state your name for the record. The motion carried. Mr. Neal, the report of the treasurer, please. Thank you, President Brown. The report of the treasurer is in the hands of each board member and has been made available to the public. I move for its adoption. May I have a second? This is Dean second. Moore Savage. Second. Thank you. Are there any comments from the board? Hearing none, Ms. Buford, are there any comments from the public? There are no comments from the public. Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying I oppose and state your name for the record. Those abstaining, please signify by saying I abstain and state your name for the record. The motion carries. Okay, budgeted personnel and enrollment reports have been made available to the board and the public and are recorded as part of the record. No vote is required. We will now have the report of the superintendent, Dr. McGarry, please. Thank you, Board President Brown. I promise to try to keep my remarks this evening short. Good evening, Board President Brown, members of the Board of School Directors, administration, teachers, staff, students, parents, and members of the community of the Upper Darby School District. It has certainly been another eventful summer, and I wanted to be sure to update you before the start of the new school year on August 30th, 2021. This evening, I would like to briefly review our plans to reopen schools for in-person instruction and my goals for the year. First, I recognize that everyone is frustrated and concerned about the social and emotional welfare of our students and staff. As an administration, we have the same concerns and the same frustrations. Our number one priority is to open schools for in-person instruction for all students and to keep our schools open for in-person instruction. In order to get our students into our schools and keep them open, we have to consider and implement a few mitigation strategies to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. I have participated in conversations with medical professionals, and I have read all of the updates from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention and the Pennsylvania Department of Health. Delaware County superintendents no longer have the support, guidance, or data from the Chester County Health Department. So we are tasked with making decisions based on the best information we can find. The superintendents in Delaware County meet regularly to discuss our plans for reopening our schools. And we all recognize that each of our school communities is different. Our school facilities are different. Our student populations and enrollment numbers are different. And perhaps more, most importantly, our communities may or may not be more or less inclined to be vaccinated. While these are just a few examples of our differences, they are also key topics that help superintendents make difficult decisions. In the Upper Darby School District, we will be bringing students back for in-person instruction. Where and whenever possible, we will attempt to keep at least three feet of social distance between and among our students and staff. This may not always be a reality given the space limitations of our schools. As a result, we moved to requiring masking of students ages 11 and under, and ultimately, we've moved to require masking of all students and staff vaccinated or unvaccinated. We made this decision because we want to keep our schools open. If we open schools in the substantial range with three feet or less unmasked, it will be nearly impossible for us to contact trace positive cases of COVID-19. The recent guidance provides us more flexibility in keeping our schools open if students and staff are masked. I'm not here tonight to debate the merits of masking, the vaccine, or COVID-19 testing of staff and students. 
My job is to follow the best guidance I have been provided in order to make the best decision I can to keep our students safe and in our schools for instruction. We will update our plans from time to time as more information and guidance becomes available. I am happy to meet with any parent or home and school association community to discuss our reopening plans. And I will continue to do so as I have throughout the pandemic in school reopening planning. On the screen, you should see our most recent communication and mitigation strategies plan. I'll wait until it's, it's up on the screen. What we are attempting to do here as a school district is to try to create a one-page document, if possible, that will be, as you can see, dated with the latest updates on the top side. It says August the 3rd. We'll continue to keep each updated plan on the website. We will send this out to the public and make sure our board is aware of it, our students, and our staff. We will provide the latest links for the COVID-19 in Pennsylvania documentation from Pennsylvania Department of Education. We are letting everybody know that attendance will be required, whether you're virtual or in person. We are asking our families to continue to screen their health before they come to school. Same with our staff. We're letting everybody know that we'll have sand sanitizers available, masking of students uh, and staff. We hope that um, positivity rates and community spread does go down so that we can remove masking at some point in time in the fall. But while we're in substantial, we will be asking everyone to be masked. We will be testing uh, symptomatic students and staff. Um, this may change based on positivity rates, our ability to keep certain extracurricular activities opening, open. We also wanted to provide some information specifically from the uh, CDC on how masking allows us to keep our schools uh, open. In the past, if you were six feet, even if you were masked for accumulation of uh, uh, 15 minutes over a 24 hour period, uh, you'd have to quarantine, if you, even if you were masked. Now, if you're three feet, but you're masked, both individuals are masked, wearing masks appropriately, it will allow us to keep our schools open, and that's why we're moving in that direction. We are also demonstrating here um, how we'll continue to do athletics and performing arts. We know how important extracurricular activities are to our students, and we know that the pandemic really took its toll on the social and emotional well-being of our students. We will be communicating any positive cases uh, whether it's a classroom concern or a school concern to those school communities. Um, we'll talk about in-home isolation and quarantining throughout the school year. Uh, we may, for a period of time, have to actually shut down a classroom or a school, but not all of the schools in the district, depending on the guidance we receive from the Pennsylvania Department of Health. Overall, our entire plan will be keep our schools open. The reason why we have moved to masking in our schools at this time is that three feet of social distancing, if we go below that, and that sometimes we will, we should be putting masks in place. That's the recommendation. And by putting the masks in place, it will protect our teachers and protect our students from being COVID positive, And that will allow us to keep our schools open. The concerns that we have facing us moving forward will continue to be positive cases and staffing of our buildings. Masking, we believe, gives us the best, best opportunity to get through the fall and potentially flu season as well. Again, I want to say thank you to everyone for their patience and support. We know that it's certainly not easy to hear this. Uh, as I said earlier, the administration is equally as frustrated. We, we were hoping to open schools uh, much more easily than we had in the past. Board President Brown and members of the board, this time each year I also announce my goals for the new school year. Some of these goals will continue to be short-term as well as long-term goals. We'd like to recruit, develop, and retain the best staff, foster a learning environment that celebrates student growth. We continue to refocus our attention on our elementary school programming so that our young students develop a meaningful educational foundation. Continue to improve our communication internally and externally. And really, it's important that we reinforce an inclusive learning environment for all by reviewing how our current systems and structures, including the curriculum, staff, and resources we provide, prevent equitable opportunities for the students and communities we serve. Ultimately, our goal is that we want to make sure that everyone feels included in our schools in this district. Everybody has uh, a strength, everybody has goals, and our job is to help them meet them. I'm thankful to our Board of School Directors and my team for their support as we continue to open schools for in-person instruction the 21-22 school year. 
for President Brown and members of the Board of School Directors. This concludes my report for this evening. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McGarry. I think your uh, goals are impressive, and I think it encompasses everything. Uh, it shows where we are and where we want to go collectively, so thank you for that. Well done. Before we uh, go to the Education and Pupil Services Summary, I wanted to announce, in, in honor of full disclosure, the board held an additional close executive session on the evening of August 4th, 2021, to discuss a litigation matter. The session began at 6.30 p.m. and concluded at 7.24 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Berman. We will now have an update on the July 27th, 2021 Education and Pupil Services Committee meeting. Mrs. Mitchell will read the summary. Thank you, President Brown. The Education and Pupil Services Committee met on July 27 virtually in the boardroom at Upper Darby High School. We had one, two, three, six agenda items. Um, the first one was a comprehensive plan update and board action is required on that tonight. The second item is the 2021-2022 calendar and board action for one-page calendar revisions and professional development calendar is required this evening. Agenda item three is also board action for the high school course planned instruction of the English 9 research and writing, American literature, and music. Another board action item for tonight is type to learn. Um, it's a program that Ms. Ms. Neal, Kristen O'Neill presented about a typing, a cloud-based keyboarding program for all students in elementary schools this upcoming school year. Agenda item number five was an update from Dr. McGarry and the administration on the reopening of schools, and you just heard what those were. There was potential board action, but there is no board action required at this time. Agenda item number six was a policies um, 146.1 trauma-informed approach, 204 attendance, 218 weapons, 218.2 terroristic threats, 236 student assistance program, 236.1 threat assessment, 247 hazing, and 249 bullying and cyberbullying. You will hear more um, about those policies during the policy report later in this meeting. There was one public comment in regards to masking. It is not included at this time on the summary, but it will be included um, tomorrow and uploaded to board docs. That concludes my summary of um, the meeting that we held on July 27th. Thank, Thank you. you. Very, Thank you very much, Mrs. Mitchell. You're welcome. And now we'll have um, update on the July 27th Finance and Operations Committee meeting. Mr. Fields will read the summary. Thank you, Board President Brown. Uh, Finance and Operations Committee meeting re uh, met um, July 27th, as previously, previously mentioned, at 6 p.m. There were three uh, agenda items. Uh, item one was just informational, uh, the 2021 bond issuance update. The uh, district administration provided an update on the finalized 2021 bond issuance and the positive impact it will have on the district's capital plan. This item correlates with goal one of the Upper Derby School District Comprehensive Plan. Uh, and for more detail, uh, you can see the previous meeting. Um, it's a very low interest rate, so that's very, very good. Uh, and then we had two items that require board action. These are both uh, policy updates. Um, uh, first is board policies around meetings. This requires board action. The school board reviewed and updated policies governing school board meetings, school board committee meetings, and special voting meetings as the board has adopted new practices during COVID, the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Board members responsible for, for policy uh, uh, Mr. Niels with Neuers and uh, Mr. David Neal, uh, the Neals, uh, presented examples of language that the board may wish to adopt. Um, policies that may be affected uh, included, but were not limited to um, policy, uh, 003 for functions, 005 for organization, 006 for meetings, uh, 006.1, attendance at meetings via electronic communications, 903, 
<coughs> public participation in board meetings. Uh, agenda item number three, uh, additional policy updates for board action, uh, 805 for emergency preparedness, and 805.2 for school security personnel. And that is the summary of the Finance and Operations Committee meeting. Back to you, Board President Brown. Thank you very much, Mr. Fields. Mrs. Mitchell, will you take care of Vice President Kerry's task for this uh, instruction and curriculum report, please? Yes, President Brown. The instruction and curriculum report is in the hands of each board member and has been made available to the public, and I move for its adoption. This is Damian Warsavage, second. Thank you. Are there any comments from the board? Hearing none, Ms. Buford, are there any comments from the public? There are no comments from the public. Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying I oppose and state your name for the record. Those abstaining, please signify by saying I abstain and state your name for the record. The motion carries. Back to you, Mrs. Mitchell, once again, the personnel report, please. Thank you, President Brown. The personnel report is in the hands of each board member and has been made available to the public. And before I move for its, an adoption, for its adoption, I have one comment. Um, we have one retirement tonight that I would like to acknowledge, Mr. Harry Dietzler, who has brought the magic to the UDSD Performing Arts Center for 35 years under the school district auspices. You will be missed and we wish you a safe and healthy retirement but we know that you will not be absent from the community. Congratulations on your retirement. Now I move for the report's adoption as stated. Thank you, Mrs. Mitchell. Uh, I do have a comment myself. Um, I, would, I would be remiss, I think, as president of the board to not acknowledge uh, Mr. Harry Dietzler's contribution to our community and to our students for many, many years. Uh, I think his work is invaluable, uh, and I think he's, he's touched a lot of lives uh, so we have to to give credit where credit is due. I think he did a fantastic job, and I agree with Mrs. Mitchell that he certainly will be missed. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the board? Well, this is uh, Director Neal. I second Ms. Mitchell's uh, motion. Okay, thank you. Okay. Are there any other comments from the board? And yes, yeah, this is Director Neal again. Um, sure. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to welcome back uh, Daniel Highland. He's going to be the principal of Charles Kelly Elementary School. Um, he's coming from outside the district, but previously worked within the district and has um, and graduated from Upper Darby School District. So it's very exciting uh, time that he is coming back, and he will be our principal at Charles Kelly Elementary School, as I said before. So uh, please welcome back uh, Daniel Highland. Thank you for that. Very good. Any other comments from the board? Uh, yes, this is uh, Director War Savage. I just wanted okay. to... I just wanted to echo uh, Mrs. Mitchell's comments in regards to Mr. Harry Diesler. I went to school with uh, two of his sons. Uh, we both shared some vocal classes. I actually live not too far away from the Dietzlers and some of their other relatives. Uh, they've made a positive impact, not only as an individual, as Harry, but as the Dietzler family for, for quite a few generations. And I want to wish him a very happy and very fruitful retirement. Are there any other comments from the board? Uh, this is uh, Board Director. Uh, I'd like please to make a comment. Yep, okay. Uh, as the uh, Board Director that has probably known Mr. Diesler the longest, sorry, Damian, um, uh, I, I do uh, want to say thank you to him for uh, all his efforts in the district and in the community, in the township for um, the past many years. Um, he's definitely... Uh, if you ever read Tina Fey's book, uh, she has a lot of praise for the space that he created in the township uh, with his Summer Sage program, and uh, it really is something uh, impressive. Um, uh, I will say publicly um, that uh, Mr. Deesley gave me the best advice that I never took, uh, that, but, uh, that, but that I made sure to uh, impart upon my kids, which was... Um, I was in high school, and like probably a lot of kids in high school right now, I was I was I was working um, I was working uh, after school, and uh, and I was in a situation where I didn't really have to work, but I 
chose to work. Um, and he said, you know, you're going to work your whole life. Um, you should, you should take time to enjoy high school. And, uh, and it is something I, I wish I, I had followed at the time, but it's definitely something that I say to my kids now, like, and, uh, when they express interest in a part-time job, I say, well, are you doing everything you can in school? Cause if you have time for a part-time job, you know, maybe you have time for a school activity, which you might get more out of. Right. And I understand in, in our community, there are kids that have to work and that's something different. I'm not really speaking to that. I'm, I'm speaking more to the people that do it out, out of a choice. Um, and, uh, and I do appreciate that from Mr. Dietzler and, uh, I do appreciate everything he's he's done, and does in my, in my comments. Thank you very much, Ms. Buford. Are there any other comments from board members? No, there aren't at this time. But Dr. McGarry would like to comment. Certainly, please, Dr. McGarry. Yes, uh, on behalf of the administration, having uh, known Harry for a long time as well, and I, I want to just echo the comments that have been made. Um, when you work in education for you know close to forty-five years or more touch thousands of lives, not only in the Upper Darby School District, but in surrounding communities. So I think uh, Harry's a legacy without, without question. His efforts with children um, go above and beyond, and um, we're happy to hear that he wants to continue to work with kids. Um, the school district is looking forward to uh, building its programs with our new administrator as well here coming to Upper Darby, and we've asked Mr. Dietzer to help um, be a part of that process here with us here in Upper Darby, and we look forward to uh, summer stage and to see how that develops moving forward and to uh, to continue celebrating and recognizing uh, arts, uh, whether it's art, theater, and music in Upper Darby, um, and continue the great traditions that we've had here for so long. And I just want to congratulate Harry and his family for, for the legacy that they've created here in Upper Darby. Thank you, Dr. McGarry. Ms. Buford, are there any other comments from board members? No, sir. There are no more comments. Thank you, ma'am. Are there any comments from the public? There are no comments from the public. Okay, thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those who please signify by saying aye oppose and state your name for the record. Those abstaining, please signify by saying aye abstain and state your name for the record. The motion carries. Okay, the policy reports, Mr. Desnoyers. Thank you, President Brown. Uh, so the um, policies undergoing a first reading are, give me a moment while I get the right file up. Uh, policy 003, functions, policy 005, organization, policy 006, meetings, policy 006.1, attendance at meetings via electronic communications, and policy 903, public participation in board meetings. Uh, the changes to these policies, um, which are in a first reading, um, come from the board's discussion during the July 27th um, Finance and Operations uh, Committee meeting um, and um, are meant to both update the policies to um, include best practices, but more importantly to um, incorporate practices and lessons learned um, since the pandemic began in how the board would like to uh, run our meetings going forward. Um, uh, several key changes are um, the board is making permanent the um, public's ability to um, provide input via phone and email. Um, and second, the board has um, 
decided that in updating policy 006.1, attendance at meetings via electronic communications, um, we no longer indicate that um, a board member might attend a meeting uh, virtually under extraordinary situations, but it might be a more common occurrence. Uh, but the board did um, decide that um, unless we are operating under a declared emergency, um, there will be a minimum of five board members physically present at, a at, at meetings. Um, and the, uh, so the, the question came up as to whether we are um, at this time operating under a declared emergency. And um, we essentially are, we are uh, operating under a public health emergency, not a governor declared emergency. Um, and then another, um, another change would be that uh, in voting, um, we, um, we have been voting for some time by voice vote, and it has been made, the, the changes make clear that uh, when a voice vote is taken, unless a school board member specifically votes in the negative or specifically abstains, it is presumed that that school board member um, votes in the affirmative. Um, so that that gives you a sense, that gives the, the um, public a sense of some of the major changes being made. Um, since these policies are in a first reading, they have to be uh, considered uh, at another board meeting and voted to be adopted. Uh, so look forward to that in the future. Okay, thank you, Mr. Desnorris. Before we move on to the second reading policies, I think we want to um, Ms. Mitchell had a comment just to clarify uh, about the uh, board members present at a board meeting. Mrs. Mitchell, please. I just wanted to comment that these are all proposed policies. Um, they're going through our traditional route. We actually discussed them prior to a first read, but we didn't make actual decisions. We will be looking at them um, now that they are written in a first read. They will be looked at at the next committee meeting, and they'll be voted on. Um, if there are no changes, or maybe if there are, at the following board meeting in September. I just want to make sure that the public understands these are proposed policies. Thank you very much for that, Mrs. Mitchell. They're not set in stone yet. Mrs. Des Mr. Desnoyers, please continue, sir. Okay, I will continue with the um, uh, second reading policy report. Uh, the, the policy report is in the hands of each board member and has been made available to the public. I move for its adoption. This is David Neal, second. And, Pre you. and President Brown, I have a comment. Okay. Um, so uh, there are there are ten policies on the list for the. Um, Second reading, these 10 policies and the changes included herein will um, go into effect with an affirmative vote by the board tonight. And um, uh, nine of these policy updates uh, are related to uh, change in state law concerning threat assessment. Um, the district is now required to put certain policies and procedures into place regarding threat assessment. Um, and uh, policy, and I think there was, yes, policy um, 204 attendance is being updated. Uh, and this is driven by uh, changes to state law enacted uh, two years ago that become effective with this upcoming school year. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. That concludes my comment. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments from the board? Mrs. Buford, I'm sorry. I need you to 
monitor the chat since I'm looking at my other screen. No, sir. There are no comments from the board. Thank you. Ms. Buford, are there any comments from the public? There are no comments from the public. Thank you very much. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying I oppose and state your name for the record. Those abstaining, please signify by saying I abstain and state your name for the record. The motion carried. Okay, that brings us to the transportation report. Mrs. Williams. The transportation report is in the hands of each board member and has been made available to the public. I move for its adoption. This is Mrs. Mitchell, second. Thank you. Are there any comments, Ms. Buford, from the board? There are no comments from the board. Thank you. Are there any comments from the public, Ms. Buford? There are no comments from the public. Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying I oppose and state your name for the record. Those abstaining, please signify by saying I abstain and state your name for the record. The motion carried. Okay, the next is the facilities report, the use of facilities report, and the donation report. Mr. Fields, please. Yes, uh, the, facil the facilities report, the use of facilities report, and the donation report are, the, are in the hands of each board member and have been made available for the public. I move for their adoption. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Ms. Williams. I, I believe there is one comment from... The administration. Okay. Or, requ or request. Let me just check with the board first. Are there any comments from the board? There are no comments from the board. Okay, thanks. And you said there's a comment from the administration. Please. Comment or request. Comment or request. request. Is there a request from the administration? Uh, I don't know of any. I'll, I'll, I, I'll go. I, I think okay. uh, Mr. Fields is alluding to Dan McGarry. Uh, Mr. Fields is alluding to that in the use of facilities that, as we had discussed previously, the board had provided financial relief to youth programs to help them get uh, their feet under them during the pandemic. You'll see in the facilities report that sports teams that were, um, you know, had to forfeit a season, whether it was football or indoor basketball during the pandemic, that we would be waiving the, the fees for the upcoming year for those particular sports seasons. And the administration will take responsibility to contact and communicate with those particular youth organizations I think it's a great gesture that the board's um, looking to show its continuing support for lo local uh, programs who have been financially hit uh, during the pandemic. And we just wanted to make it a point. I appreciate Mr. Fields allowing us to, to highlight that. Great. Thank you. Thank you for uh, highlighting that. Thank you, Mr. Fields. Are there any comments from the public, Ms. Buford? There are no comments from the public. Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying I oppose and state your name for the record. Those abstaining, please signify by saying I abstain and state your name for the record. The motion carried. Okay, well, that brings us to the finance and budget report. Dr. Haig. Thank you, President Brown. The finance and budget report is in the hands of each board member and has been made available to the public. I move for its adoption. Second. Thank you. Um, are there any comments from the board, Ms. Buford? There are no comments from the board. Are there any comments from the public, Ms. Buford? There are no comments from the public. All those in favor, thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying I oppose and state your name for the record. Those abstaining, please signify by saying I abstain and state your name for the record. The motion carries. That brings us to our collateral assignment reports. Um, Mrs. Curry is excused for tonight, so I do not think we have a report for the Delaware County Community College. We will start with the Delaware, uh, uh, the DCIU, Mrs. Mitchell, please. Sure. Thank you, President Brown. The Delaware County Intermediate Unit School Board of Directors met last Wednesday for their August school board meeting. Most of the motions that were passed were in regards to the reopening of schools. Uh, the health and safety plan will be voted on for the Delaware County Intermediate Unit 
um, at the first um, meeting in September, which is the first Wednesday of the month. Um, there is no additional report at this time. Thank you very much, Mrs. Mitchell. Legislative Council, Mr. Neal. Thank you, President Brown. Um, so it's summertime, so it's pretty quiet in Harrisburg. Um, so I do not have an additional report uh, this month. Okay, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Mendenhall Tyson Scholarship Committee, Dr. Haig. Sorry, no, no update at this time, Mr. Br uh, Mr. Brown. Got it. Understood. Uh, home and school, Mr. Warsavage. Thank you, President Brown. Um, I actually shared at least some of this, uh, I believe, in the last committee meeting that we had late last month. Uh, we just updated all of our home and school families and leadership in regards to what our opening plans were for the beginning of the school year. We also uh, it, were ongoing in conversations and seeing how we can best utilize all the resources amongst the different home and school associations because there are untapped opportunities to share with our students and their families in terms of all the activities that can be done with more resources pulled together. Thank you, Mr. Warsavage. Just a quick question for you. Based on your observation, uh, the back to school plans, was it well received overall? Was it well received by the families? Uh, that's a great question, President Brown. <clears throat> uh, there, there were questions in regards to some of the ways that we were going about at least uh, proposing what we have already pretty much set in stone in terms of what we're following for the opening of schools, but it was, as a whole, well received. Thank you very much for that. Technology, Dr. McGarry, I know you're still there. I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit, and I know we collected all of the, uh, the Chromebooks, and I think we have a, a plan in place to redistribute those for those who uh, will stay virtual. Is that correct? Can you talk about that just a little bit? Yeah, sure. My um, e back to school letter should be going out tomorrow. I'm just working out some final details with the administration. I will be putting out my e letter to welcoming back uh, for the start of the 21-22 school year. There'll be a second communication that we'll be discussing uh, computers and how we will be handing computers back out to staff staff and students as they return to schools but we will be back one-to-one -one. Uh, so if you're a student who is even coming for in-person instruction you'll have a laptop if you're a student who is remaining virtual you'll have a laptop um, we just want to make sure that we had them brought back in uh, clean them up and we give them back out to, to students as we return to the school year so I'll, I'll certainly provide an update as well um, once we get the school year uh, kicked off Sounds good. Did you collect the hotspots as well? Will they be re redistributed as well? Yes, we. That will be in the communication. That's also in my um, that one-page document that I reviewed earlier that we sent out to the public. Hotspots will be available. Thank you, uh, Board President Brown. Once again, please, you know, don't be shy. Reach out to your uh, principal and your social worker at your at your school or schools, and your social worker and your building level principal will be able to uh, make sure that if you need a hotspot, you'll be able to get one. Sounds good. Thank you very much for that update, Dr. McGarry. PSBA, Representative Mr. Desnoyers or Mr. Warsavage, do you have anything? Uh, this is Mr. Desnoyers. I, um, the, uh, the monthly um, meetings or webinars uh, for uh, PSBA um, folks, uh, I don't believe are occurring during the summer, so we look forward to them um, starting up again in September. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Well, uh, let's see. Oh, Mr. Warsavage, did you have anything to add? Uh, no, President Brown. Okay. I, I do have something for PSBA. They have leadership uh, meetings that they used to do weekly uh, prior to the summer, uh, and they um, are reorganizing those, and they did start those in August. Actually, it was one today, um, and they'll be monthly. They won't be weekly anymore, but they'll be monthly. Obviously, the focus of today's discussion was about uh, back to school and what different districts are doing, so I'll provide a um, a detailed summary of that. Um, yeah. Policy, policy liaisons, Mr. Desnoyers, I know you did a great job in our committee meeting and, you know, summarizing those. Do you have anything to add about policies, you or Mr. Neal? I do not, President Brown. Okay, thank you. And I do Ms. not as, uh, uh, I do not either. Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Neal. Thank you. Communications, this is Mitchell or Dr. Haig. Thank you, President Brown. Um, Dr. Haig and I and um, our 
fabulous communications director, Rhonda Buford, put together a monthly school board update. So look for that um, in your email. Great. Sounds really good. Thank you for your work on that, too. Um, I think that takes us to old business, if I'm not mistaken. Is there any old business from board members? Okay, hearing none. Is there any new business from board members? Okay. All right, now we are, we are now at the time for the public hearing. We will read both email and phone comments, which are subject to the three-minute time limit and must include the commenter's name and address. Mrs. Buford. President Brown, we have a comment from Lynn Arney, located at 1500 Lansdowne Avenue in Darby. Uh, this comment was received on the 5th at 10.45 a.m. via email, and it is a general comment. This comment begins, I just wanted to take a moment to thank you all for working with the Clifton Heights Boys Club for this 2021 season. This has been a challenge for all, I am so happy that the children in our community and our surrounding communities are able to have their 2021 season. It means so much to these kids. Again, thank you. End of comment. And uh, Dr. McGarry, I believe you responded to Ms. Arnie's email earlier? I think it's Amy. Yes, Is it's uh, Ms. Okay. Ms. Ami. I, I, I definitely oh, responded to Amy. her and um, I, I try to respond to everybody who sends an email. Yes, I did. And that was really a kind uh, comment that she sent. Sorry, my eyes failed me. Okay, our next comment is from Allison Denny. This comment, uh, she is located at 721 Wildell Road in Drexel Hill. This comment was received on the 8th at 10.06 a.m. via email, and it is a general comment. The comment begins, I am writing in regards to the, to the busing situation for many parents this coming school year. I do not think it is appropriate for any elementary school student to be expecting to cross State Road with no crossing guard. The closest, safest spot to cross is Vermont Road, and that would involve walking along State Road to get there. That this is not having the children's safety at the forefront of everyone's mind. I really, I really wish the board would reconsider this. End of comment. Our next comment is from Emily Cola, located at 4934 Woodland Avenue in Drexel Hill. The comment was received on the 10th at 4.06 p.m. via email, and it is a general comment. The comment begins, my daughter is a fourth grade student at Aronimink Elementary. She absolutely loves the staff and looks forward to returning to school this year. We were informed she will not be receiving transportation for the school year, and I'm sorry, but I find this ridiculous. We live across State Road and in an area where crossing really isn't safe for adults, never less young children trying to get to school in the morning, there isn't really isn't a safe spot to place a crossing guard in this area. I fully understand that COVID mandates and restrictions make this difficult for the district, but that doesn't change that not having a bus puts a lot of our children, our students in danger. Many families depend on the school buses. I really hope you're able to reconsider and find a way to help our children have a safe trip to and from school each day. End of comment. Our next comment is from Cherie Davis, located at 143 West Madison Avenue, Clifton Heights. This comment was received on the 10th at 6.40 p.m. via email, and it is a general comment. <coughs> Excuse me. The comment begins, what is going to be the policy for children whose parents disagree with masking. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are plenty of studies that show that cloth masks do not work. Masks cause more harm than people to people than good. They do not stop COVID transmission. Wolf has said that he was not going to mandate masks, and the CDC encourages them but has not mandated them. This should be optional. I will be more than happy to supply studies and doctors' opinions on this. End of comment. Um, President Brown, that ends our comments for this evening. Thank you very much, Ms. Buford. I just want to state uh, for the record, for, for those um, community members who sent, you know, their very thoughtful and legitimate emails, you will get a response uh, from administration on that, you know, with, um, you know, with follow-up on, on 
the things that you inquired about. So um, thank you very much for that. I think that completes the public hearing. Is there a motion for the adjournment of the meeting? So moved. So moved. I think I heard a first and a second. Yeah, I'll second those, David Neal. Thank you, David. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Take care. Have a good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good night.